Oh, the weather outside is frightening, but the fire is so delightful. And there's me no place to go. Let, let it snow, snow, let it snow, let it snow. That's all I know. Well, we finally say good night. How I hate going out in the cold. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to drink coffee, you know, through this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to do anything through that thing, but I have. Wait, you got to see it. It's epic. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi. Are we on? We are on. I'm assuming we're on. Yeah, Tolo, it's already Somebody said hi. Somebody say we're on. Did Tolo say we're on? Hi, Tolo. Hi, Tolo. Seminar show. Okay. That's AV Nut. Washington. That's AV what? AV Nut. Well, that's right. AV, AVI Nut. <laughs> okay. Are we festive enough? I think we're festive enough. Because I'm melting <laughs> in this thing. I'm melting. Uh, uh, oh, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Burr, it's so cold here. It's, what, it, what did it drop down It dropped today? down all Hold the on. way into the 60s. Yeah, it's, it's a nippy 66 degrees out there right now. Ooh. I know. I was setting Ooh. up my Christmas decorations in the mid-80s yesterday. I was putting on my holiday bikini as I do this time of year. Ah, uh, yes. And you look so... Fine. I had to redo those coconut shells, you know, because you, you want something you know, real coconut. You have, you have to put, dip them, you give them aspirin and sugar. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> hang the ornaments. <laughs> Go with it, Scott. Dream. I'm, Dream. I'm, I'm not. I already went with it. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, I have to go home now. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'll pay for that therapy, buddy. Don't you worry about it. Uh, and the colors, and the purple, and the people. So, hi everyone. Welcome to the Monday Ask Mike Anything with Mike Myers. And Scott Jernigan. Why are we here, Mike? Why not? Because, it, because it's here. No, that does, it's mountains. Sorry, I confused those. We are here, uh, the function of this live stream is to give those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus mm -hmm. an opportunity to continue our studies. So this is really, really an important opportunity, especially those of us who are isolated. There we go, I got my shtick down. Where's David Mohan when I need him, man? I don't know. God bless it. Anyway, um, yeah, so the function of this live stream is to help uh, those of us who are studying for our uh, CompTIA certifications. Uh, IT Fundamentals, A+, F+, Security+, although we can certainly go outside of that on an as-needed basis. Um, the, the way it works is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is type into the, the chat questions and I'll answer them. So a couple of uh, things we ought to consider before we get started is looking at that chat window in the top left, you'll see it says top chat. Let's hit that pull down and send it to live chat. Uh, that keeps things in as best order as we possibly can. And then the three little dots on the right of live chat, go ahead and toggle the timestamp to make sure you can see the time that everybody's made a post. We're going to be giving away some great stuff today. And a lot of people who are participating in these giveaways will want to have those timestamps up. Trust me when I tell you this. So go ahead and do that. Or And if you want to, you can do the third thing, and that is actually pop the chat out into its own window. I find that convenient, but y'all do whatever you want to do because that's, just, and, that's how we roll here in Texas. Right, and when you pop out the chat, it'll immediately revert to top chat. So. Holy shimoleons, Batman. I never <laughs> noticed that before. <laughs> make it live chat. Mm, top it, chat is you, YouTube's... Number uh, one. Make it live, number one. YouTube's... Talk. Little censorship bot. So live chat is live chat. Censorship bot. The things that they cut out... When Mike was teaching binary, nobody could see the ones and zeros, believe it or not. Well, that certainly protects our, our youth of today. That's right, that's from right. The, from the dangers Just that are Swearing binary. in binary. Well, I've seen a lot of people doing subnetting who would probably agree with that. <laughs> 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 It, this is just such a frustrating thing for me when I teach subnetting. Is the problem with subnetting is subnetting doesn't make a nickel's worth of sense if you keep it in dotted decimal notation. Absolutely. The only way to make subnetting make sense is to get rid of the dots and get it back to what it really is, which is a string of 32 ones and zeros. Then it's pretty straightforward. Right. It's just the, everybody's such victims of the dots. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Or, or though with IPv6, are they going to be victims of the colons? There's a joke in there. <laughs> there is a joke. I can smell it oh, somewhere. Oh boy, oh Ooh. boy. No, maybe not. Tell it, you're on. What? I'm just asking him to come up with the joke. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got thousands of them. He's here all week. Try the meal. Okay. Uh, and just to answer your question or to uh, note your observation, tell it, Michael Smyer came up on Monday last week and made the sound magic happen. It's like magic sound. Magic sound. I thought it wasn't supposed to go into the reds, though, eh? Steve? That's a different thing, because I'm, I'm compressed on the end, so even though that's posting, or pegging... <laughs> well, we're in a... We're in a yes. You're the one who keeps... I'm, you keep throwing them underhanded. This is a... This is a G, we have high schoolers on here, Scott. I, I know. That's why I'm trying to keep it PG-13. PG? No 13. <laughs> Told with, you know, he's got a couple more years. That's true. That's true. Mentally. See, Alucard liked the swearing in binary line. Yeah. Somebody gets my humor, Mike. Oh, that's it, yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> 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 Woo. Uh, All right, let's see who's here today. Siegfried. Sig yeah, sorry to disappoint, Siegfried, but Grumpy Mike isn't here today. It's I'm not sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Gabson. Oh, you, you never even saw The Shining, did you? Possibly the greatest Jack Nicholson film ever. Red rum. Red Red. Oh, look at you! <laughs> look at you! Yes, that was the last horror film I ever watched. Here's Johnny. Because it was so terrifying. Oh my god, that was scary. Considering there was like almost no blood in it. Yeah. Scatman Crothers taking the axe in the chest. Now, so that now you just spoiled it. Huh? You just spoiled it. They're probably. not going to watch it. <laughs> okay, Jeremy Parker here is here. Mohammed El Abiyad. Hey guys, hey there. Alan Duggan is here. Esteban Shafir is happy Monday here from Argentina. Um, I'm here. Da -da 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 -da. Dave Rush. Oh, uh, our esteemed senior instructor Dave Rush is the moderator behind the scenes. You'll see him post up every once in a while with a little wrench next to his name. I prefer uh, to call him the immoderator. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's hey. pretty much Dave. Here, yeah. here's a line. Dave, Dave, come back. <laughs> Dave used to be an airline pilot back in the day, like real air, airplanes, you know, as opposed to fake ones. Like, yeah, right, know. right. Commercial jet aircraft. Right. So we call him Captain Dave. Captain Dave. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I should be on right now. <laughs> I had a wildly inappropriate joke. Well, uh, just censor yourself so we don't have to I censor the strength. I, just, I know, you're, uh, doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. All right, so we have I've got a couple of questions actually popped up right after David, David Mueller said hello. Uh, JM, first off. The, the man who uh, asked good questions. That's right. This is at 2.02 p.m. Would you recommend using a secured public DNS like Quad9 in my Soho, or should I stick to my ISP's DNS? Absolutely. Secured DNSs are the way to go. Uh, the, only alter the only argument I would make to that is some of those more secure uh, DNS servers do not have the steel quality of like a Google DNS server. Right. But God only knows what Google does with it. I still use a Google DNS server, but then again, I'm also using my Pi Hole. Right. So uh, the Raspberry Pi Hole really does help a lot. Uh, it, when you're using public DNS servers, and honestly, it's 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 not the Google DNS servers that worry me, or the it's the ISP DNS servers, the AT and T's and stuff like that, the walled garden stuff. You'll know that you don't have a great DNS server when you type in something wrong, and then all of a sudden it's like, here I'm at AT and T. Right. Have you seen those? Oh yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's not evil per se. It's just. Just, I don't even remember what the official three-digit, It's well, it's not an HT, It's not an HTML error. It's not an HTTP error. Not being able to get to DNS. It wouldn't be 404. I don't remember. I don't remember. In fact, I'm not sure that it would even be one of those. So your brother-in-law is here briefly. Who's my brother-in-law? Which one? Al Mumford. Where, did he leave already? No, he's, he's about to, apparently. Yeah, well, Al, you need to give me some money, man. <laughs> Hi, Al. <laughs> Al, I'm going to be down in uh, Falfurious. We're going to be close to you for New Year's Eve. We're going to be... Falfurious, Texas? Really? We're, we're, Is that the real place? Falfurious. Fal Falfurious. I, don't know I, I can't be, even pronounce it's it. It's in the Val... It's a... Uh, we're going to go murder helpless birds. Oh, okay. You're going hunting. 
for New Year's Eve. They're delicious though, man. <laughs> Texas Dove, man. Awesome. Yeah, if you're gonna hunt, eat it. That's what I say. Of course. Uh, All zombie jokes. Just stop right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, you're there too. <laughs> I'm there. I'm, I'm totally there. All right. Brent Peterson at 202. Not the Brent Peterson. The Brent Peterson. Yeah. Any recommendations on learning the command line interface? Yeah, probably the best thing to do. Remember, command line interface changes dramatically depending on what type of shell you're using, right? So uh, going from the old CMD to PowerShell to like a Bash shell right? Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of differences. So the thing you want to think about is why do I go to a shell? All right. And one of the best things to start with is file and directory manipulation. So to me, probably the best foisty thing to do at a shell is just practice your CDs uh, and <laughs> making directories, removing directories, MDs, RDs. copies, moves, and deletes. Right. And practice with that. And for crying out loud, don't do this on your C drive or on your, you know, <laughs> because everybody does it at least once where you like delete star dot star. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. And you're like, Wait. oh, stop. Control Z. Really, Control no. Z. Yeah, because that, yeah, because you're fast, your computer doing something that, you know, 10 million mega flops per second. And you're like, ah, oh, Control Z, stop. Or try to close the terminal. It's like, <laughs> it's too late for you, human. <laughs> this is what computers look like when... Yeah, because they're, they're... Hey, you know, yes. I saw the Avengers. Hmm. Did you got, get that reference, Mike? I s totally did not get the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers, the 1960s uh, No, 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 no. The, the new Avengers. Oh, uh, uh, no. Professor Zola put himself into a machine. I, I'm just not a fan of that kind of stuff, you know? What's Spider-Man, you know, and uh, Superman and all that stuff. Wait, Superman is, is the wrong universe, right? Yes. <laughs> He's in the DC universe. Yeah, very good, Mike. <laughs> I watch commercials. <laughs> uh, Can we help? My yes, friend yes, Jam yes. has questions, and, and uh, you're, you're not getting to them. Well, and David Gomez has one at 204. It says, hello, Mike, I'm studying Network Plus, and my plan is when I finish in a month and a half, I'll begin with cybersecurity. I want to work in as a cybersecurity specialist. Network Plus is a good start. Uh, I, would, I would recommend if you get a job as like a junior analyst that you also get Security Plus certified. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the bar on that. I'm, I'm going to take it where Scott says and go a step higher, and that is I think Security Plus is about to, if it hasn't already, become the gateway IT security, actually get you a job certification. Uh, and you know, for a couple of years now, I've been telling people, don't take Security Plus first. And the reason I'm telling them to not take Security Plus first is because you can't, very few people can successfully go from zero to Security Plus. It just right. asks too much. Right. But going to Network Plus is a, is a, is a great first step. JM at 204, uh, how do I put the timestamps on this chat so that you could know when I actually say it's 204? And I'm looking at that question. There are three dots, like a vertical ellipsis at the top right corner of the chat window. If you click on that, you'll see an option to toggle timestamps. Toggle it, and then you'll be able to see the times. There you go. There you go. BM got his voucher, which is awesome. The vouchers are, CompTIA is pretty good about this. Well, I think what CompTIA finally did is they got a system for all right. this. Yeah, this is great. I, I hope CompTIA keeps this up. And speaking of, do keep in mind, we've got Dr. James Stanger coming on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Yeah. And um, this is something you don't want to miss, folks. Um, Dr. Stanger is, is uh, Mr. CompTIA. Yeah, I mean, works he, for CompTIA. He, he has awesome. a wonderful like head of being cool or something like that. <laughs> I forget what it is. Uh, but uh, James, <laughs> more more importantly, he is a crackerjack tech and he knows his way around technology. And uh, I, I love the CompTIA folks, but they're for the most part they're folks who do certification and selling right. vouchers. And these are all good things. Right. But to have a tech uh, that that's always great. And uh, so, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, edge routing at all. You know, the thing is, I warned James that 
these these guys are capable of <laughs> asking questions Let's from talk about left, right, and center. Different. Yeah, yep. so all good. All right. uh, okay, uh, John at two hundred seven says, "Hi, Mike. I'm taking my core one in a week, and I've studied your Udemy course a lot. Do you have advice for test day?" Relax. Seriously, John, that's the biggest one. Number one reason people fail CompTIA exams is test anxiety. Trust your training materials. You'll do fine. Relax. That's the most important thing. Siegfried, Siegfried, Siegfried. Siegfried. What's the Shining? What's the Shining? Uh, it was a, based on a, a novel by the famed American author Stephen King. Uh, yeah, Stephen King. I was, yeah. I was thinking Clive Cussler. No, 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 Stephen King. See, Stephen King, absolutely. Considered one of the, one of the most amazing scary. books and a, an awesome, awesome movie. Arguably Jack Nicholson's finest performance. Although Gosh, one flew over the that. cuckoo's nest. I'd have to go there. Well, Chief, um, Nicholson's best movie. God, he's been so, he's so good. In Chinatown so was really good. Oh, yeah. I'd have to think about that one. Oh, as good as it gets, with Helen Hunt. Did you ever see that? I don't think I did. Oh, yeah. It's 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 a it's it's a oh, romance. Oh yes, I did. It's kind of a it's romance. Like a like a December type romance, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good though. Tolowit, Roadkill et Tufay. I'm sure there's something in there. You were talking about going down south and hunting. Well, no, we, we shoot them. <laughs> yeah, but if you just find them on the street as well. No, no, we don't eat those. <laughs> that, that, that's uh, no, that nice and fresh birds, delicious birds. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle at, at 212. Uh, even better, RM R. Asterisk. You got to put it in the R. Asterisk. asterisk, that's right. I agree with you, Daniela. Oh, yeah, and then Dave, sure. Throw in the pseudo in there to make sure. <laughs> that Dave. I tell you. Cisse Binta, oh, I'm late. Yeah, sorry, Cisse, because I told everybody how they could get free money, but you decided oh, well. to be late because you had to do something important, I'm sure. You had to have that last beverage. I just always assume it's a beverage. Okay. Yeah, I just noticed my NASA shirt has cool NASA stuff on the arm. That's a very cool NASA shirt. This is the, uh, this one is for the uh, CST2. Uh, I'll think about it in a minute. Okay. So Tullibut has a, a legit question at 210. Go. Uh, what are your thoughts on Google Fi phone service as an alternative to the big guys like AT&T and Verizon? My personal phones, I'm either using Google Fi, although these days I've been switching to Ting, T-I-N-G. Uh, Google Fi is a little bit big brother on a few things, but it doesn't seem to be that bad. Ting seems to be, uh, and just look up Ting, type T-I-N-G into your Google search and then... Uh, it right. comes up. Uh, they're cheaper than AT and T. You know, it's, it, they're, and I've used AT and T on my corporate phone for, you know, a long Ever. time. Yeah. So uh, I prefer them. I prefer them. Better controls. Excellent. Um, J M. If I was to learn a programming language, would you recommend learning Bash first before learning another programming language like Python? I wouldn't consider Bash to be a programming language. Right. I, I, I would consider that the shell. I mean, you could say scripting, right? Uh, but, but even yeah. but you don't you don't need it for Python. I mean, it's it, they're very different. I got to tell you, I mean, to, in today's world, JavaScript is almost like a requirement for almost anybody. I'd be curious to see what Michael Smyre would say about that. Python. I mean, Python's great. Yeah. yeah, that's all the all the programmers when I started making noise about learning programming, they're like, start with Python. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, Patricia Grace, she, oh, I'm sorry, impressionable youth you. Wow, I've wandered into some nerdy corner of YouTube. <laughs> Us? Us? What? Come on, no. <laughs> Reza Hossein is here, good day. Uh, Straight Path. Pat. That's a new name. 218. Hi, Mike. I'm taking your Core 2 training at Udemy. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. It's okay. How, how do I it's use okay. it? How it's do... either that or a blow to the head. <laughs> how do I use it along with the famous Mike Myers A plus book? Well, keep in mind, uh, Straight Path, you really, because I want even more money from you, you need a third <laughs> thing, and that's going to be practice questions. I found for years that uh, videos or instructor led, you don't have to have videos if you have an instructor led, 
Uh, no, straight path is new, not Reza. Anyway, uh, sorry guys, we got background conversations going here. Uh, so the, the nice part about the videos is that they're based on roughly, well not roughly, darn near exactly, not exactly, but close to the uh, chapters in the book. Right. So do it a chapter at a time and then hit some practice questions, then move on to the next chapter. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Some people like to watch the videos, then read. Some people like to read, then watch videos. Everybody's different. I know lots of people who read the entire book, stem to stern. We call them nerds. Nerds! <laughs> uh, David Zintara? What's the safe? Okay, we're good. Catherine was agreeing with that good question. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that was great. a good question. All right. Uh, Siegfried van der Wee, oui. in regards to Network Plus, any news on when the 008 book and video courses are coming out? I'm looking forward to getting started. Well, Scott, you can address the book. I can. The book will be out about mid-January in the warehouses. Uh, ebook will be available immediately, uh, like January 14th or something. And then the print book would be uh, following me a week or so after that just to get shipped to various stores. All so. the chapters were done with them, including the final, the copyright, the, the I, use my words. We finished all mind. of the page proofs Friday. Yeah. Everything, so, yeah. So once we hand, when we say page proofs, these are the ones that are already in the nice format. McGraw-Hill hands these to Scott in the PDF form, da, da, da. All books uh, begin life as PDFs now. I don't know if you guys knew that. And then once Scott gives that the once over, it pretty much... The e-books are instantaneous, but we have to queue them for the uh, paper because like everything else in today's world, paper's hard to come by, distribution is hard to come by. <sighs> yeah. Blech. Uh In terms of the videos, I was told that they were going to be up last week. So it, it is a non. It's this week, yeah. This week. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So there you go. There's your answers. And they usually go up pretty fast to Udemy because it's a very easy platform for us to interact with. So... That should be... Yeah, Udemy tends to be the first, mainly because we're in control of it. Right. Whereas uh, folks like LinkedIn, they really, they want to look at it and double check right. it and all that stuff. So they have their own editing folks in there. Um, so at 2.20, BM asks, what do you think is the best way to start studying for the A-pluses? Should people start with videos? I think you pretty much yeah, addressed this. Yeah, I think we kind of covered that one, BM. Yeah. But, but BM, do it, do it feels right to you. I assure you, you will want videos, you will want a book, and you will want practice questions. How you decide to use those are going to make the most sense to you. And here's the other important thing, BM, is that it's not like going to be some great, painful process for you to figure out what works best for you. You'll pretty much just instantly start doing it. You'll, it'll just work. If you, um, one thing to keep in mind as well is if you don't have a lot of equipment to be able to do your own hands-on labs, uh, get some simulations from either us or from our competitors so that you can go through the process of setting up a Soho router, setting up a, a network switch or whatever um, virtually. So when you get the simulation questions, the performance-based questions on the A-plus exam, you won't be thrown off. So there you go. But having your own lab and doing the, the work directly is better. So CD113 at 221. I bought your A-plus book to pursue a career in IT for the first time and have little to basic knowledge. And I just scrolled. Do you recommend sticking to A-plus first before moving on to any other certification? Yes. And, and the reason is more isn't what you think it is. Uh, CD113, you bought the A-plus book. You've started that process. Finish it. Uh, it it's good for your soul. Uh, I mean, A-plus is the right thing to do anyway. Right. But, so what's happening here, so CD113, I don't know you from Adam, I, so I, I don't want or, you to... Or Eve. What? Or Eve. Oh, wow. Sorry, this is the line, this is the politically correct side of the line. Yeah? Mr. Yeah. Bringing up religion on a public forum? Okay, fine. You said, I don't know you from Adam. You said Eve. Ignore him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you serious? All right. No, go. Can I answer this person? Would you please you know, answer CD-113? So what you need to be doing here, and so what's happening is CD-113 has bought an A-plus book. 
And CD113 is now starting to discover more about certifications mm -hmm. and what's out there and what's happening. So now CD113 is now like, oh, maybe I need to do something more. Right. And you do, but after you've done A+. Plus. So stick with that. It'll be good for your soul. Let me read the next one. Mac, 2.23 p.m. I failed the A+, plus three times. Oh, I don't like to hear that. I don't like to hear that. Before I realized that you need the book, a lab setting, and practice questions. Am I missing anything? No. Study well. That's the only other one, Matt. There, especially given that the fact that you mentioned not only mine, but other of my competitors who I find Which respectful. Yeah. You, if you fail again, there's going to be some core issue here that we're not seeing that would have to be addressed. Uh, I don't want... I, I'm like, I'm like here, here's my... Con I, I don't want him to fail again. I, I, you can't fail again. You have to do it. Okay. Uh, Siegfried, 224. Yes, we have another lab manual coming out for the 008. Network uh, Plus, there's 008. A, there's a passport book as well. Um, we, and there are new practice exams and new simulations and new videos. And um, we tend to do the entire package to provide training materials that people will need, either in a live classroom or for self-study on every product we do. JM224, I read on your Network Plus book, pay attention, Mike, that I can use virtual routers, what? switches, and firewalls to manage VMs. Are virtual routers, switches, and firewalls expensive? And do they have to be from the same provider? That's a facet. <clears throat> That's an interesting question. It is an interesting question. Uh, JM, I'm going to use the word ignorance in the way it's meant to be said that you lack knowledge, all right? And that's why we're all here, because we're all ignorant to some extent. Sure, and yeah. that's why we're here to learn and grow. JM, uh, virtual routers and switches and firewalls can manifest in a lot of different ways. You're using the word virtual machines. In this case, there are most certainly virtual switches that can be easily accessed to a lesser degree virtual routers, uh, but the, 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 when you start saying things like uh, firewalls and virtual routers, to me, that's more of a cloud thing, which are virtual machines technically. Uh, I'm not aware of a way in VirtualBox, Scott, to get a virtual firewall. What you can do is uh, you can set up like host-based firewalls in VirtualBox. Right. The only option in a virtual machine would be to go to a more aggressive, like a type one hypervisor, like VMware. Uh, and VMware certainly would have virtual switching. It certainly has uh, virtual routing. But, you know, they make virtual routing sound like it's a big deal. You have a virtual machine. What's so mysterious about that? You still had to install a real operating system, right? Right. So it's not that, you know, I mean, it may not. It's a piece of software that thinks it has direct access to your RAM, CPU, and hard drive, basically. So... How do you how do you install something like that? So like for a virtual router, what you're probably going to do in VirtualBox is you're going to install some kind of Linux. I'm a little rusty on the types of Linux that, I mean, they all come with some type of virtual routing and virtual firewalling. I mean, I'm going to date myself, but I'm an old IP chains kind of guy. I don't even know what they use anymore. So what you would do is like for your router... You would install a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine, and then you would use routing features that are in Linux to control the other devices. Equally, if you had a firewall, you'd probably just install a, it'd probably just be Ubuntu as a firewall. I mean, it's, a, it's Ubuntu desktop, but you just run the firewall software. Mm -hmm. And people are like, no, I, I need some special kind of firewalling software. No, nah, that doesn't exist. You know, it's, it's, it's just... Almost every type of, of firewall out there is really just a Linux box of one kind or another running some kind of firewalling application. Same with routing. All right. Sounds good. So the bottom line is you absolutely can use virtual box or a type 2 hypervisor. You're just going to be installing extra, extra machines. If you're like, oh, well, Mike, if I install an extra machine, how do I like put the firewall between that and my network? Well, that's... Not that hard to do, but it's going to take a little doing, you know what I mean? Right. And a little practicing and playing with it. Remember, all, all virtual devices can have lots of virtual NICs in them that you can physically connect any way you want. It's not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. Cool. So 226, 
Matteo, Matteo Rio says, Mike, you talk about the script in the A+, plus where could I learn more about it? Because when you open the MMC, it's hard without the script. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't either. I was hoping that would trigger a memory. It doesn't. The script, you can learn more about it. Mateo, I apologize. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on. Where's your mouse? Your mouse is I dead. My, I think my battery's starting to go to the... All right. Mateo, this is for you here. Mateo, send me an email. My email is michaelm at totalsem.com. Uh, what you're probably quoting is something that I've probably said that I've long ago and forgotten, and uh, I need your help to uh, jog my memory, and I'll be more than glad to point you to whatever you happen to need there. But like I tell the IRS every year, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, good man. Mm. Um, when you open the MMC, is hard without the script. It's not. You open, go to a command line and type MMC and hit enter. Emmet. God bless it. Hold on a minute. <laughs> now, he's, now he's on a tear. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it is MMC. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MMC. Yeah, MMC. Sure. Why was that? Oh, because Emmet. Never mind. Okay. MMC. Uh, Andre Zaharia asks at 227. Note that timestamp because we're about to explode. Kick over to questions to a contest, yeah? Mm. Um, Andre Zaharia says, is there a place where we can take some practice tests? So what I'm assuming here is that you mean, is there a place on the internet where you can take free practice tests? I don't know of any place that has good free practice tests. Uh, we make commercial ones, as do our competitors. Um, that's how we pay the rent. Yeah. Yeah. You that's might be able that's to where Scott gets those polo shirts is because uh, you know, he's got to get paid. Got Man's got to eat. We've stolen food from the mouths of my children. <laughs> I'm cute. I'm getting some. I know. I know you are. I, I want to do are. Network Plus this time. Okay. So at 227, CD 113. We Thank you. A, we have a lot of products. We, we have, like we have a lot through. of products. Yes, we, we have do. like zillions of products. One, CD 113 thinks we're hilarious. So there you go. Yeah. Well. And a question here at 227. Thank you. What would you recommend for a first time IT job while I'm studying for A plus and also after passing the two core exams? Anything you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Entry level is not the place to be picky. It's probably going to be a sales job or it's going to be, you know, working uh, at a help desk or something like that. Your, your, your first job is whatever you can grab. Uh, so just take what you can get. You don't, don't be picky. The important thing you got to remember about IT is that you, you, your first couple of jobs tend to be fairly quick. It's not uncommon for people to have two or three jobs in their first year. So don't just keep going. Is that, is that going to work? So what's actually interesting yes. here, Scott, sure. is that we don't have uh, the 008 <coughs> questions here. We do not. Mm, all right. It's no big deal. So it'll be an 007 question, which are still 95% valid. No. Uh, well, and more importantly, 007 is going to be valid for another seven eight months. months. Yeah. Eight months. Yeah. So, so honestly, if I was going to be taking an exam right now, I'd go with the 007. Of course. That's because we, uh, we know what's on the exam. It's been out for three <laughs> years, and we right. can tweak practice questions and stuff to be a little bit better. All right. Anyway, Scott, so uh, guys, I did promise we're going to be doing some competitions. So let's go ahead and start our first competition now. We're going to be competing for uh, free practice questions. And we have lots and lots of practice questions of different types. Uh, what you're, we're going to be competing for is 90-day access to the practice questions of your choice. And we have just, when it comes to CompTIA, we got just about everything. So um, the, here's how the rules work. Number one. Uh, it's not fair. It's not fair. I'm going to put up a multiple choice question and you're going to answer it by posting something into the chat window. Number one, do not type in the letter. Don't type in A, B, C, or D. Type out enough of it so I know what you're talking about. Number two, the first one who wins gets the prize. Now, the trick here is that you might think you're the first one, but that doesn't mean what's going to show up on our end. So keep that in mind, too. Also, uh, we, we have, uh, if, if you've 
if you've won before, we prefer you not compete, but you know, no, no, so or you can compete, compete for word fame, certainly. Uh, but if you want to play and, and not win another prize for now, then just type the word pass after you, you answer. So the basically, but you're like, no, I really want to compete. I need more practice questions. And you've won before, you can still compete, but Absolutely. keep did, in mind, you may get the Mohan prize. Did you tell them about the A, B, C, or D? I did. Okay. All right. We're good. Shall We've we got begin? these incredible rules down. Uh, 227 is where I've left off. So I'm going to go to the end of the stream. I'm ready. Okay, 227, you got it? I got it. All right, guys, let's start with our practice question. This is for 90-day access to CompTIA A+, plus, uh, CompTIA, not just CompTIA. We have a lot of practice questions. Yeah, AWS as well. Yep. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Which of the following services is most likely to need an NTP server? 802.1x, Kerberos, PKI, EAP, TLS. See, this is another one of these where I can make a pretty strong argument for more than one answer here. You know, but what's the number two reason people fail CompTIA exams? They know too much. They know too much. All right, so guys, we need you to put in an answer, please. <laughs> Mohammed, we're laughing at you, buddy. <laughs> we know what you meant, but we're going to tease you mercilessly anyway. So that yeah, so people are answering. Do you, do you, I I think we probably got a winner at this point. Yeah, I think we have, we do have a winner. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, honestly, from a timestamp standpoint, 802.1x is sensitive to that. EAPTLS is sensitive. PKI isn't. Uh, well, actually, PKI is. But it's not so much for an NTP server, it's over the amount of time it would take before you get, it would time out. But obviously the question is always going to be Kerberos. Because you mean the, the answer is always going to be? What did I say? Question. Oh, the answer is Kerberos. Uh, ticket granting servers use a timestamp uh, that is, uh, that absolutely has to be tracked by the client to make sure that everything comes in. Let's make sure we're correct. Answer B is correct. Oh, by the way, folks, this is our practice question format. So... Uh, the answer is B, Scott. Kerberos. Kerberos. And so we have a new winner today. A new winner? A new winner. Poor Congratulations, Khan. Khan! You've won 90-day access to the practice exams of your choice. To collect your prize, you need to send an email to Dave Rush at DaveR at TotalSim.com and include <laughs> your, your YouTube address or name a valid email address, and which practice exam you want to take. Uh, he'll get you set up, and you'll be good to go. I'm going to leave that up there for a minute. Okay. So, and again, who was our winner? Khan? Khan. Shaka Khan. All right, so Khan, keep him, so Khan, do you understand? You have to send an email to Dave R, that's D-A-V-E-R, the Daver at totalsub.com. And in the body of that email, make sure your YouTube name is in there, just like you have it here, K-A-H-N, your email address. And people are like, well, Mike. I mean, I've already just, I, it's an email, so just use the email. Nope, nope, you gotta have the email address in there because people are sometimes different and uh, we will get that to you. Excellent. Also, and we had Con, we have multiple, uh, Dave has posted in there, Scott has posted, all that information is in there. Con, it is up to you to do this on a timely basis. And Con has already said thank you, Mike and Scott. Con You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Use it well and live. Roll well and live. Yes. What's that from? Charlton Heston. Been her. Mm, yeah. That movie I saw. You did. Many times. You yeah. had to. I, you know, because it just. You know, back in those days. <sighs> wow. <laughs> uh. All right, 227. Um, where am I? Danielle Forleo. Do you mean that euphemistically? Forleo. I'm, at, I'm uh, in the middle of Montrose, the artsy district of Houston. Scott, I'm going to ask you to do something that I almost never ask you to do, and I'm, I'm quite serious about what I'm about to ask you to do. Yes? I would like some more coffee. Oh, I would be happy would to you give go you fetch more. I, I, will, I will fetch for you, my well, friend. Well, I, I use the word fetch on purpose because you're asking somebody to do that. <laughs> so I'm not going to come up with some nice word. Could you acquire us a cup of coffee there? Absolutely. Uh, CD113, thank you. What would you recommend for a first time? I, yeah, we got that one. Okay. Danielle Forello, is there any way to get a Mac OS VM to practice on it? <sighs> I mean, legally, of course. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, there's always some tricky little way to do that. Uh, 
CompTIA doesn't ask a lot of questions that are Mac OS specific. It does ask some. Yeah. Uh, well, because the, here's the big issue. When I learned how to drive, I intentionally skipped the parallel parking part of the exam. I wasn't any good at it, but I knew if I did everything else right, I'd pass. Right. Okay? Well, I know you're not supposed to say this to people, but, you know, there's certain stuff, if you do well on everything else, you can kind of skip it. You know, those so things like Windows 8, and there are Windows 8 questions, you know, but I'm not supposed to say stuff like this. Scott's going to yell at me later because it's like, oh, they, we should learn everything. It's like, eh. You wouldn't say it like that, though. You'd say it in a forceful and strong, macho way. I'd say it in a forceful, vigorous. <laughs> How about the Mastros? Huh? Or find somebody who has a Mac and say, hey, can we hang out? Honestly, that's probably the better way to handle it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the Mac OS is, is, you know, if people were to say, Mike, I need, you know, my grandmother or somebody needs a, a system, what should I get them? I would recommend a Mac over a Windows machine. Uh, Mac is pretty bulletproof as an operating system. It tends to have one place to do one thing most of the time, uh, whereas Windows can be incredibly, uh, what's the word, when you have two brain by... There's always two or three ways to do something in Windows. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking... Multipath. I was thinking something more derogatory, but that's the basic idea. Uh, but So the thing is, is that I think most people, especially if you're a Windows person, you could sit down with a Mac OS system for an hour and find yourself incredibly well versed in it. It's just, it's a good straightforward operating system. I like Macs. I just make more money at Windows. <laughs> so at 231, Dave Rush, the, our esteemed moderator, or M moderator, as the case may be, posted this week's specials. These are just for those of you who are watching this live. So the special this week is 50% off our ebook and practice test bundles, 50% off. That means if you get an A-plus ebook and get the A-plus practice test, you then type in at, at totalsim.com, you go to checkout and type in the code. Uh, how are we going to pronounce that? What? Where record or record? Record. Or record. It could be either way. I know. All right. Just type R-E-C-O-R-D in the discount window, and you'll get 50% off that product, those products. So amazing, amazing deal. Right. And, Mateo Rio, I did, but it never got delivered. Don't I'm not, know, I don't know what he's talking about. That, about that. Yep. Mateo, we don't, I don't like fighting about things that didn't get delivered. We work hard to get everything to people on a timely basis. And uh, I've discovered after a while that people complain about things not getting delivered. And then I suddenly discover, and we talk to the people who are trying to get it delivered to them, they're like, well, he wouldn't send me the right email or, you know. It kept getting bounced back. <laughs> Tell him it, you're killing me here. <laughs> I don't get it. You asked Mateo to, to email you, and Tell it threw you under the bus and said, Mike loves lots and lots of cat pictures. Because <laughs> he's funny. Because he's funny. All right, so Discord. This would be a great, a great way to do this. Um, at 2.42, Dave Rush posted the link to the Discord channel. This is not our Discord channel. Total Seminars does not have a Discord channel. I don't this have a Discord channel. is, however, the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. So basically, if people say stuff on there you don't like, and yeah, it's a <laughs> snowflake-free zone, okay? Let's put it that way. That's pretty much true. Yeah. Uh, but it's a great place for you to show up. Um, we're often on after the live stream happens on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll be on today. Excellent. Um, and you can plug in your camera and hook up your microphone and talk to us directly. Yeah, and the, then we can the, see you too. But the important thing is, is that if you don't want to put on a camera, you know, you don't want to talk, you just want to post like regular Discord, you're more than welcome. Yes. Love, love to have you. More than, 500, more than 500 people on there. Lots of really good texts. Very helpful people. Well, there's, so, and there's Andre. But I mean, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, is Andre on right now? No, he's not. Uh, too, uh, uh, he's probably out in one of those, do you hear the Belgians all up in arms over their lockdown? Uh, yeah, but he's in the Netherlands, officially. But. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I literally have been making the joke about Andre being in Belgium for so long <laughs> that I have forgot that he's a Netherlanders. Oh, yes. Oh, Andre is on. he's not on. Andre is on. Dang! Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the I, uh, I love the Belch. They're great people. Absolutely. Right. 
Did somebody just type Kerberos? Scroll down. Oh, no, this is what I'm saying. Okay, keep going. Okay, I think we're there. All right, so it's uh, 245. We've got 15 more minutes here, Scoot. Crypto Inu, yay, okay. Get Kerberos, 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 eat TLS. That's Mohammed, what we're... I'm, we're gonna mess with you like forever for typing in eat TLS. Instead of eat. Mm. Delicious TLS. Yes. It's delicious. It is. Um, I'm just... guard, but, but I answered first. <laughs> <laughs> Those Belgians are so funny. Okay. David uh, Rush, Civet Cat Coffee? Absolutely. You know what Civet Cat Coffee is, right? No clue. So Civet Cat is like a, it's a little small furry mammal, okay? And I think they're in Indonesia or something, and there's this particular type of coffee. So the coffee beans fall to the ground, and the civet cats eat them. And then after the civet cat processes it, these people pick it up and then make coffee from it. I'm completely serious. I've, it's I've, like the most expensive coffee on earth. Mm, a little nutty. <laughs> <laughs> a little poop coffee. I like it. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, am I catching a little whiff of... Uh, Charm in there. <laughs> I mean, so many people from the EU. Like, quick, name a brand name of toilet paper in the EU. I, I don't know. I don't know. Tesco. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You got to come up with something. <laughs> uh, yes, and Ping, you could hear me because my mic stayed on. I didn't turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I got out to get Mike some more coffee is because I'm on a wireless mic and he's wired. Which is why his sounds better. Yeah, that, and that's why I asked him. So, of course, I'm going to go fetch him something later. <laughs> there you go. So, CD113 at 2.42. How crazy do I need to get on memorization of things like the number of pins on a stick of RAM and other memorization for CompTIA? Pretty heavy. A uh, for the A+, plus on the 1101, you're... Uh, I'm already saying 1101. On the uh, 1000... Which doesn't exist. Not, not yet. It's coming. On the 1001, it would be important to know... Uh, the different pins of your DIMMs, uh, you will be asked direct questions that uh, address that. So you should definitely know that. Uh, what you don't need to memorize is a bunch of number of pins for uh, pa pa uh, help me CPUs. CPUs. Uh, but understanding that this is a CPU package. You know, if you see LGA or something like that, you should know what that is. And then you'd also know that like LGA date myself, 1156, for example, uh, you would know that that's the number of pins. But that would be about it. Absolutely. Um, Madman, Madman. Madman! At 242. Would you recommend the practice test and flashcard on union test prep for CompTIA A+. Madman, all I can tell you is that union test prep is a competitor of mine. I've don't, never heard of them before. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make them good. Uh... I do believe that people should use practice questions other than mine. The reason you pick other practice questions is because question writers get a voice in their question writing. I mean, it's like if you hand me a, uh, like a Jack Kerouac novel, you let me read a paragraph, I can tell you it's Kerouac. Or sure, the Fitzgerald, voice. Or, because it's the tone of how they write, right? Hemingway would be another example. Stephen King would be another example. Sure. So, and, and that's what makes when we're reading novels, we enjoy that voice of the person. The problem is, is that question writers have a voice also. And I do too. And when you see these questions that are written, it comes in a single voice. So when you see the actual question on CompTIA, that is, now we don't give you exact questions, but if we have a question that says two plus two equals blank, you better study what two plus three equals. You know what I mean? But by having other people's questions, practice questions in there, you hear different voices. And uh, Scott likes to hear voices <laughs> a lot. So I'm in this all patron uh, patronizing hand motion here. Yes. and It's actually, I'm about to give you the Vulcan death grip. The other voices in my head are wondering why. <laughs> the one, well, the one over there wearing the pitchfork. <laughs> Do good things, Scott. Oh, me, no, no. <laughs> Do the fun things. Ha, <laughs> ha. You want to drink milk? No, cognac. All right, Eric Crenshaw. Um, first, Avocado says hello at 244. Excellent. Avocado? Uh, Eric Crenshaw at 245. Been a while since I could be here. 
Ready? We were wondering. Because I got a tech support job with Verizon. Ah, round of applause for that one, Ace Absolutely, yay. yay. Congratulations, Eric. That's why we're here, buddy. He said, thanks, Mike, for all your words of wisdom. So, very nice. Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. <laughs> Have you seen that yet? D uh, no, I saw it in 1969. Beatles White Album. No, the, the Peter Jackson uh, uh, no, giant no, no, documentary. Not, not yet, not yet. Okay. Patricia Grace left. What? Oh, uh, Patricia. No, the plants are going to die. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, avocado at 246. 246. I passed the first interview, and we'll have a second one this week. That's awesome. Looks like this next one will be non-technical. Uh, wear a nice, wear a clean clothes. Eye contact. Shake a hand. Have, know, know something about what you're doing. Know the company ahead of time. Don't get smashed, or if you do, you have to change your name to guacamole. <laughs> oh, wow. Avocado's never heard that one before. Uh, never once. Never. Well, his name's really not Avocado. Or her. It could be a her. We don't know. Okay. Uh -uh. Uh, Eric Crenshaw, I have an interview tomorrow with AT&T for Look at a field tech. Look people. This is awesome. Look, if you Good guys luck. get jobs, you still have to come back and say hello every now and then. Right. As a matter of fact, what we ought to start doing is as people get jobs, like 30 days into their job, we should interview them here so other people who are looking for work could get ideas. Sure. Oh, my yeah. God. We're totally going to do that. Guys, once you get a job, let, let me know. We're going we're gonna to put you on to say hello, if nothing else. JM, I have a spare Windows laptop, and I was thinking about making it a Type 1 hypervisor. I, okay. I create a restore port. No, no, no. JM, the moment you make it a Type 1 hypervisor, you're going to wipe out Windows. There will be no other operating system on there. You'll just have, it'll probably end up being ESX more often than not from VMware. Um, oh, what the heck is Microsoft's? I can't believe I've gone blank. Microsoft's virtual machine. It, it is uh, hi, Hyper-V. Hi, uh, hyper Hyper-V. Hyper-V is actually a type one hypervisor. Uh, if you've got a Windows system and you install Hyper-V on it, what you're really doing is installing Hyper-V on your system and then putting Windows back on top of it. Right, and what, what I didn't realize is that when I did that, because I was just wanting to experiment with Hyper-V, Hyper-V and I was, like all good techs, I'm doing it on my primary work machine. And then you wanted to take it off. No, and then I, I started to run my uh, virtual box, all of my VMs from Oracle. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, no, we you don't play You run a virtual machine inside a virtual machine inside a virtual machine. Yeah, it just said no, yeah. no. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah it's, still, it's, still, <laughs> it's still got Hyper-V Hyper -V on there. Hyper-V is a wonderful Type 1 hypervisor. Sure. It's, it's used commercially. Uh, but you're not going to be, JM, you're not doing any restore points. You know, take your critical data files, put it on the thumb drive, because you're going to wipe out everything else. So, I, I guess if you're using Hyper-V, you'd still have it, but... So at 248, Alucard, is there a retirement date announced for the current CompTIA a exams? I'm trying to find it online. So two, two things to say to that. First, CompTIA has not officially announced the 1101 and 1102 exams, right? So and if haven't... we knew something, we couldn't tell you because we're under non-disclosure agreements. You having a little winking trouble there? Ow! Oh, it burns, it burns! <laughs> I've been thinking about all that civic so coffee. Usually the retirement uh, of, an, of a CompTIA exam comes three years after the exam launched. So that would be mm, sometime in the spring. Is coming 2022. Um, but again, CompTIA hasn't announced that yet at all. And there'll be another six months at least after the, the retirement has been announced that you can still take the current exams. So you've got plenty of time, probably almost an entire year or nine months or something. I don't know. But so that's, that's my answer for you, Al Yukard. David Corazza. Hey, Mike. Love your energy in your videos, as opposed to live. <laughs> it's like, poke him with a stick. <laughs> Will you update your CompTIA a course on Udemy when the 1001-1002 versions will be retired, uh, or will you make an entire new course? Well, I mean, one of the things we always do is uh, 
there's no reason to recreate everything if you've already got good videos on certain topics. I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've updated videos simply because, well, I'm getting older. <laughs> After about six years, you're like, eh, maybe we ought to just update it, just update it. Sure. And uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is we're going to have a new talent on the upcoming A+. I don't know the person's name. Uh, Scott Jernigan. But, uh, yeah, so uh, certain people are going to be picking up the torch on A+. There you go. You'll so have a the other, the other, lot more hair. The other... Uh, Flip side of that answer is yes, it will absolutely be a new course because it's a completely new certification iteration. So it will be a separate and distinct product as opposed to a in-place upgrade or an evergreen type thing where we just say, yeah, you've already bought 1001, 1002, here's a, an upgrade. Good point. Yes, so, thank no, you, it's, it, That's just not the way the certification stuff works. So always new. Um, uh, TD Washington at 2.50. Wow, okay. We're going to run a little bit late today, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to run a few minutes past 3 o'clock. And also, folks, keep in mind, we are about to give away a CompTIA voucher. So uh, it's good stuff. I know it's why a lot of people are here. So be ready. Uh, I'm queuing up a question while Scott okay. entertains you with this. Okay. So question, TD Washington asked a question about working in tech support. I hate talking on the phone. This is going to be tough. Because a lot of tech support <laughs> is phone communication. Are there tech Actually, support jobs? Actually, more less and less of it is phone, and more and more of it is texting now. Well, are there tech support jobs that don't require phone communication? Lots of them. Yeah, so yeah. you should be able to... The traditional ones were all phone, but a lot of it is texting back and forth or remote desktoping and, and doing that kind of thing. So it should be out there. Chaco Taco finally showed up at 2.50 when the party was almost over. And Wilson says that we're just a clan of comedians more than technical people. What do you say? I don't know. Thank you, thank you, Al Ucard. Post up Hyper V when we were forgetting. Hyper V, yes, thank you. I knew we were like, okay. Right? 253, Justin Miller. I'd be willing to be interviewed. Okay. There we go. I'd love and to here's talk. Siegfried said he'd be interviewed too. There, yep. You know, it might even be something might be fun where we have two or three folks. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everybody has a slightly different experience. All right, so Justin Siegfried, send me an email. Serious. Ooh, wait a minute. Make sure. <laughs> ah, too many buttons. There. There we go. Okay. So, uh, Siegfried, I probably have your contact information, but send me another email anyway. Justin Miller, I do not have any contact information for you. And especially, he's been at it for two and a half years. That's even better. Justin Miller, send me an email. Just say, hey, I'll, let me be interviewed. Siegfried, you send me one too. As a matter of fact, if there's anybody out there who's relatively new, like two and a half years or so, or one week, who would like to be interviewed, I think that could be very helpful, like a round table kind of a sure, thing. Sure, yeah. So fun. if you guys are interested, let me know, and uh, we can set something like that up. So 253, Eric Crenshaw says, I've bought, I bought your books in Total Sim. I assume the practice exams. Yep. That... Uh, watching these streams helped me get into IT. I never thought I would because my background was primarily HVAC. HVAC is 90% PC based these days. I mean, uh, unless you're actually in there, you know, pulling uh, pipe, it's not conduit. Pipe. It's not conduit. Big things up in my attic. Plenum. Oh, that wasn't That's where That's why they going. call it a plenum space. It's, the, it's a plenum space, but the plenums are the air things. Huh. Yeah. Who knew? Apparently you did. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, oh, that's interesting. At 255, uh, JM says, I saw CompTIA is offering the new beta CompTIA Linux Plus certification for $50. If, if, that can if, be a great thing. Uh, uh, CompTIA does this uh, a lot, especially for a new exam that's been updated. The downside is, is that there have been a couple of cases where they did that, where the test was just really bad and nobody got any certs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but for 50 bucks, it's worth a shot, especially if you're going for Linux Plus or whatever. Not against it. Absolutely. 256, CD113 says, asks, does Total Seminars do training bundles? Yes. Go, go to www.totalsim.com. You'll see that we 
sell indiv individual products. I know I'm having trouble talking. It must be the coffee. Uh, yeah. We sell, in <laughs> <laughs> we sell individual products and we also sell bundles. So uh, just, just over about www.com. Totalsim.com. Let me do the patronizing hand motion again. There you go. www.totalsim. Why is he touching you? <laughs> Stop touching me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to see Scott Journey? You can go nuts. Watch this. <clears throat> and <laughs> Scott. You see that line? Wait, he that line right there. This is the decorum line side. That's the indecorous one. I am indecorous. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm wearing pants. Oh, that's not what indecorous means. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> Scott, we've got to give away a CompTIA voucher here, bud. Okay. I'm sorry, but CD113 loves our conversation, but the main reason they're here is they want a shot at a free CompTIA voucher. And for the record, young man, I was about to lie to you and say I was ready. You weren't ready. So you're, now you're <laughs> lying to me. But you were about to lie to me, but you didn't. I was about to lie to you, but I'm ready now. Okay, because we're done with questions, except for one last line here. Techmatic sneaking in at the bottom. 301. I just received my first service desk job a couple of months ago, and my director advises I don't need Network Plus. Is it just the two of us? So I get plenty. Oh, it's just the two of us, so I get plenty of experience on the job. Should I just keep learning? I think you should always keep learning, Techmatic. Uh, I think it's good that you have a, a boss who's telling you what's going to help in that job. But I mean, how do you get promoted from there? If there's right. just two of you, right? Right. You take him out. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not, not literally. But yeah, yeah. You know, what you do is like you, you cut his Achilles tendon, and then every time he drives, he'll slice. <laughs> uh, I, like I've told people many times, uh. your certification is for your next job. And if you're happy where you are and you see yourself well-established, there is a point where people stop getting certifications. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's usually someone who's going to be more mature in their industry before they would reach that point. And uh, so I, I, we'd have to have a big, long conversation. Jump on the Discord channel. We can have a conversation about that. All right. So speaking of, we're going to do another contest. This one is similar to the last one where Mike's going to put up a multiple choice question. Do not answer A, B, C, or D, but type enough of the answer so that we know what you're talking about. We know you know what you're talking about so, or that you can type fast. All right. And what we're doing is we're competing for a CompTIA A plus voucher. Well, a CompTIA voucher applicable to any CompTIA yes, exam. That's literally what I was about to say, even though I said A plus. So this is a CompTIA voucher that work for any A. Okay, listen. That will work for any... I'm not doing that on purpose. I know. That, that would work for any CompTIA exam. It is international. It doesn't matter where you live. If you have a testing center in your country, or you can get to a country that has a testing center, you have you can get a valid voucher, okay? So this works anywhere. Um, and this is, this is a program from CompTIA, not from Total Seminars. So what happens is... It, when, when you win, we send your information to CompTIA, and then CompTIA will contact you with your voucher. All right? Uh, first person with the correct answer to come to me on my screen uh, is the winner. If you want to play but don't want to win, and really? I do, yes. You, <laughs> then you, you can just type pass. pass. Also need to warn you guys, we do these voucher giveaways because we want to help people. So if you've already won a voucher we put an arbitrary and unfair weighting against you. That doesn't mean that people who've already won a voucher cannot win another. You can. But we're going to give the newbies a little bit of a shot. Right. So with that attitude in mind, let's go ahead. Shall we do this last question? Absolutely. Let's do this last question. Because it's already after three. I like this question. This is one of these CompTIA kind of questions. This is Network Plus, by the way. This is one of these CompTIA questions that has a lot of words but it's actually a wildly simple question if you just read the thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. You guys ready? Here we go. Some, whoop, someone has taken a patch cable and plugged both ends of the cable into two adjacent jacks on a patch panel that is part of an IDF. Both ports connect to a single switch. What most likely, what will most likely occur? Broadcast storm, duplicate IP address, VLAN malfunction, QoS loss. Let's see what people say. Can you try and fit a little more of the question on the screen? Oh, okay. Oh, but now the answer. Yeah, it's a little bit of, I can't quite. 
Here you go. You got it. Look at me, Scoot. You're amazing, Mike. I don't care what they say. Now we have the Jeopardy theme song running through our heads. Do we have winners? I don't know. Okay, we have a lot of people answering. We have a lot of, wow, okay, a lot of people answering. All right. Okay. We assume we have a winner. So there's a couple of things on this question I like. Number one, all they're asking is, if you really look at the question, you've taken a patch cable, you've plugged it into a patch panel, mm -hmm. and both of those are going into the same switch on the other side, right? So that means you've plugged, you've looped into the switch, all right? Which pretty much guarantees a broadcast storm unless you have STP. So you know one of the things that always surprises me about uh, STP protocol, Scott, yeah. is that a lot of managed switches, it's turned off. Hmm. And uh, it's something you need to uh, make sure it's turned on, uh, especially right. for Soho managed switches. Um, so anyway, with that attitude, I'm pretty... Pop the question back oh, up on wait, screen. I didn't put it. Oh, I didn't answer it. I'm, pr <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a broadcast storm. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, just a little hint. <laughs> Your answer, A is correct. <laughs> the answer is A. Broadcast storm. Who is our winner today, Scott? I don't know. It's Scott, yet. takes a minute. We've got to come up. Judges are calculating. King touch. Well, yes, we have our winner is at three oh five. Is Chaco Taco. Chaco Taco. Congratulations, Chaco. He heals me twenty six dollars. And 13 cents. Don't forget the 13 yeah, cents. I'm going to round down. You know, it just may go. Okay, Chaco Taco, congratulations to you. You have won yourself an internationally awesome available CompTIA voucher for any CompTIA certification. He's won a new car. It's from the Spiegel Catalog, Chicago 60609. All right. Scott, nobody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Stop looking at that. What are you people doing? There we go. <laughs> All right, so to collect your prize, you need to contact Dave Rush at davr at totalsim.com, and you need to include a whole bunch of information. Your YouTube name, your email address. Don't assume he's gonna be able to pick it up from the email that you sent. Put it in the body of the message. Uh, use your CompTIA certification name, what your CompTIA certification, uh, your CompTIA membership account is. Um, or your formal name. If what, you need to say wherever you are going to take the exam, where you live, what state you are, if you're in the US, and the precise exam number. Got it? Got it. Okay then, mister. Well, okay then, mister. Wow, that was pretty good John Wayne there, buddy. Or was that a Bill Murray playing John Wayne? No, oh, it's uh, Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Susan's pedals. <laughs> I wonder how many times, especially the younger folks on here, yeah, Susan's like, pedals. Like, Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's particularly appropriate this time of year, right? I have no idea what you're talking about, Mike. When the angel lose, when the angel gains their wings, a, a bell rings. It's a wonderful life. Okay. I, I saw it, but it, you know, when I was two. It's a great movie, Scott. I, I believe you. It's a wonderful, it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a, you know, wonderful life. All oh, right. Right, okay, and Dave Rush just posted at 309, the link to Discord. Uh, feel free, and you are more than welcome to join us. We're go I, I'll be on, are you gonna jump on? Most likely, okay. for a couple it, minutes it, at least. It's gonna be about 15 minutes before I get on. See, Chaco Taco, shame for you not knowing, knowing Jimmy Stewart. I know Jimmy Stewart, I'm just pulling his leg. Cause it makes, it cracks him. It does, it cracks me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, these great movies. I swear, one of these days, what I'm going to do is I, and I'm going to do this for the under 40 crowd. Yeah. Is I'm going to start having movie nights. I'll bet none of these people have ever seen a movie called The Seven Ups. The what? Oh, or The In Laws with Alan Arkin and Peter Falk. I saw it on the shelf. Oh, man. Jaws. Like the original Jaws. I didn't want to see it. I was living at he's the got, Pacific Ocean at the he's time. He's got black eyes, does eyes. I can't do it like they did. 
Uh, Force 10 from Navarone. These are great movies. Great movies. One of these days, guys. Go ahead, finish. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Thank you all for participating in the Ask Mike Anything, even with all of our hijinks. Eric Crenshaw, get on Google and look up 7-Up's movie. It's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, oh. it's about soda. That's it. It is about soda. It's actually the weird part <laughs> is at one point in the movie, they determine... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, yeah, don't say anything. Oh. Anyway, join us on Wednesday. Wednesday, this is awesome. This is so great. Doctor, James Doctor. Doctor, Doctor James Stanger from CompTIA is going to be on with Mike, and it's going to be brilliant. The last time he was on, it's the most watched show we ever had. It was like a cast of billions. Yeah, it was. And then awesome. we're going to hit James to give us have us give away more stuff. Oh, I like it. He's Put him on the spot. He's such a soft touch. No, he's he really. Is, he's like, he oh, okay. Okay. We'll just give everybody free stuff forever. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see you on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. And then Friday is 2 p.m. Central Time, also on the Total Seminars channel. And that is Dave Rush's Ask Me Anything. And it's all about Linux and studying for CompTIA exams and the Raspberry Pi. So all of this stuff is coming soon. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, wherever you may be. Goodbye. Boy, you were dragging that one on. We'll see y'all later, folks. Be good. Bye.